Beginner's Guide to Using Dimensions in Fusion 360, coming up. Hey, I'm Tyler Beck with Tech and Espresso. Today we're going to be covering Dimensions in Fusion 360. Before we get started, if you would, hit that subscribe button for me there, hit that like button, post a comment or a question if you've got one. So sketching is a critical part of any good design in Fusion, but dimensions is a critical part of sketching. So let's jump into it. So let's start by creating a sketch. Easy to do, select a plane on which to sketch on, and now let's grab a rectangle. When I bring this rectangle in, I can start adding some dimensions. Now there's some constraints that have been created on this rectangle. It's got vertical and horizontal lines and it's attached at the origin, which shows when I drag it, it's going to keep a rectangular shape, meaning I can't drag this into some strange trapezoid or parallelogram, it's gonna stay rectangular because of these constraints. Now if I remove that constraint, everything changes. So once the constraints are in place, dimensioning is next. I can hit D for dimension or go to sketch pull down and do sketch dimension. Select it. The cool thing is you don't have to select from a number of different options. You simply select the, the sketch dimension and start placing. So if you want to do a dimension from point to point, you can select point to point and it gives you a horizontal value or you can select the entity itself, the line itself, and place it. That will give me a horizontal value. It's going to place the existing value that I drew it at. I hit enter and it's fine, but at any time I can double click and change it and that will drive the sketch. It changes the sketch. That is what's known as parametric design. And so let's do the vertical. I select the vertical line and place it. Now let's talk about angle dimensions, aligned dimensions, and something called a driven or reference dimension. Let's do some slightly more complex dimensions. When I sketch this shape, I want to do an angle between these two lines. I'll start with D, I'll hit D on the keyboard, select the line and the other angled line. It then gives me some options. When I hover within, it's going to give me an interior angle dimension. And I hover it without, it's giving me this obtuse value and these other projected values. I place that interior angle dimension and type it in. Again, I can do more of these values depending on what I want. Next, when I select this line, I have a few options. What's the difference between this value and this value? Numerically, they're very close, but this is the horizontal distance between the two endpoints. And this is what I would call an aligned dimension, meaning it's the true length of the line. If I right click, I can also choose aligned from the menu and it's going to keep that locked in no matter where I hover and allows me some more play to put it where I want it to go. Now I'll select this bottom line and over on the sketch palette, I'll choose horizontal vertical. It goes horizontal, so I've built in some intelligence but I still haven't fully defined this sketch. It still moves. So let's dimension the remainder of these values. I'll select this, do the horizontal distance, the vertical distance, and what else is missing? It's still blue in parts, so when I drag the blue point, you can see that it's still stretching. So it looks like maybe perhaps this value, either the vertical height I'll hit escape on my keyboard to make sure that I remove any pre-selections. I'm going to do the vertical height between the two points and it puts it in place. A double click on any of these dimensions. I can change the value, hit enter, and then it adjusts the sketch accordingly. 
So now what do I do that this sketch looks fully defined to me? If I were to place one more dimension, I would guess that fusion will be upset. So I'll place this value and see what happens. It gives me a warning. Adding this dimension will over constrain. I'm sure you've seen this before. What does that really mean? If we hit OK or cancel, hit OK, it places it, but it's grayed out. I double click, I cannot change it. And it's got this little bracket. That's telling me that this is a reference dimension, meaning it's just a measurement. So if you want to change this value, in theory, you would need to change the other values that would adjust it. But that's not what I wanted, OK? I want this to be a driver. Let's delete it. And let's delete something else that would allow me to drive with the bottom horizontal dimension. I place it now. It's free to move. I'll put in the value. And now this is a driving dimension, but we had to get rid of the value on the top in order to do this. We'll leave that as a now. This is the reference dimension. OK, I want to show a shortcut of how you can put dimensions into your sketch faster. Let's look at one of my favorites. When I start a sketch, select the front plane, start the sketch. When I insert a rectangle, I'm hitting the S key, by the way, one of my favorite tool tips. Hit S key, it brings up some of your favorites, as well as a wild card search that if I were to type anything in, it will try to find anything that uses those characters in the name. So when I place the rectangle, if I'm slow and I don't click it just yet, I don't place it just yet, you'll notice these two values that pop up on the screen. If I were to type in 5, it puts a 5 into that box. I hit Tab on my keyboard, and then I can put in a value for the other. What I love about this is it's faster in doing the rectangle, but more than that, it placed two smart dimensions that are now fully definable that can be double clicked and changed. Let's talk about how to dimension from a circle or an arc to another arc. Next, what if we have two circles? I'm going to sketch a line between them and make that line a construction line. That allows me a little more control to keep them connected. But what I'd like to do is dimension from the outer arc to the outer arc. When I hit Smart Dimension, if I do point to point, I would expect that it would just go point to point. Perfect. Now when I do arc to arc, it's still going center to center. That is not what I intended. Instead, before I place it, I'll hit D. Smart Dimension is ready. I'll right click on the entity and choose Pick the Arc Tangent or the Outer and it lets me pick on either the interior or the exterior. I'll do the exterior, and I'll go to the exterior on the other, and it lets me do outer to outer. And let's try that again. Right click, pick circle arc tangent. I'll do interior to interior, and there we go. Very cool. Now that I want to do the circle, by default, I would expect it to do the diameter. But when I place it, I'll right click. Before I place it, I have some options. I can do radius, I can do driven. Let's do a radius instead. Place that value. Let's do it again. Select this and place the dimension. This is now the diameter. I'm going to draw a line, an arc, and another line. Now if I want to do the actual radius, I can select that. Now if I want to do the angle dimension of this arc, how do I do that? How do I dimension it? If I select the arc, it just gives me the radius. So I can use the center point as a guide. But the easiest way I've found to do it is to draw a line from the corner to the other. I'll select these lines and make them construction by selecting it in the sketch palette or hitting X on the keyboard. Now that I have that, I can select these two angled lines 
and make it 115. That now drives this arc dimension. Let's make it something smaller like 89. So what's driving where this sits? Where these, are, these lines are? So if I undo that, if I say that these two lines are always equal. Now if we change this to 130, you can see that it changes, but these two lines are still equal. I'm going to line up the two points. I'll select these two points, make them horizontal. So an important part of dimensions is using constraints. What if I asked you to do a square washer, but I said no constraints possible. You can't use them. So I'd start sketching. And I'm going to hold Control or Command on a Mac. And I'm going to, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'll connect it to the origin. That'll be my only thing. I'm going to hold Control. And I see it's not even snapping into place. And so now it's getting really hard to draw that rectangle. Now I don't have any of these relationships or constraints to hold it into place. And if I wanted a square, I should only have to put in one dimension. But since I don't have any constraints, I basically have to come in here and do all of them. What else? It's still not constrained. I hit undo, bring that back. Let's try this again. OK, what am I missing? OK, how about an angle dimension there? That's 90. How about this one? It's 90. OK, so it's starting to pick up on the pattern, saying that's over, overdoing it. OK, good. So it's picked up that this is a square. But what it doesn't know is the position of these lines. So I guess if maybe I throw in a construction line over here, and I set the, the, ink, the angle between the two, the angle from the line cannot be 0. I'm going to try 0, and it won't work. So what can I do? Maybe I can try doing a 90. Let's try doing a 90 degree between the line and this line. Let's say that that's 90. And there we go. That was a lot of work. So how many dimensions do we place? 1, 2, 3, 4, plus 5, 6, at least 6 dimensions just to get a square. Let's try that again. Let's do it the right way this time. So if I come in, I'm going to use the rectangle command. It snaps to the origin. I drag it in. And what I want to do is I can see that it holds the rectangle, but it's not square. So for a square, I need to select two entities and say that those lines are equal. Now it's going to stay square. I'm going to put in one smart dimension, make that 1.5. It's fully defined. It took one dimension. And that's all to get this into place. What if you drew a line and an arc? And then you even close off the sketch. But you'd like to know the distance of this arc. Well, maybe you drop in these other dimensions. And we know the radius of the arc, or the diameter, if we were to place that. How do I get the arc length of this dimension? Currently, that is a limitation within Fusion. But if you need the value, it's not hard to find. Go to Measure, select the arc. You'll notice the length value can be found in the Measure tool. So the question comes up, What's the difference between model dimensions or the 3D part 
versus the drawing or the 2D drawing dimensions that you can find there. Let's look at that. Make some small changes and I now make a drawing of this. We'll save it. I go to my model. I go to my workspaces over on the left and I find drawing and from the design we're going to create a 2D drawing or production drawing. Pick a small sheet. It's as me. It's in inches. Be careful with this. Be sure to pick the correct units that you'd like on the drawing. I'll select the drop in a front view. I'll even come over and choose projected and place a top view. I'll hit enter on the keyboard and now what I want to do is place some smart dimensions. I'll place the dimension and what do you know about these dimensions? If you were to double click you can't edit or adjust the values here. Okay now that we have a few of these dimensions in the drawing if I were to go back to the fixture in order to make the changes to make the change to the two or the three and a half I would need to go back to the 3D CAD model find the original sketch or feature dimension that I care about I edit the original sketch I double click on a value make this three make this four it's not able to solve the three because of the other constraints that I've put in let's make it less there we go one and a half and four I'm going to delete this dimension so that I can make this three. I'm determined to do that. So let's double click on this, make it three. You can see that it now solves that. Great. So when I stop the sketch, and if I were to hit save, I now go into the drawing and look at the value. These are still the old values but I notice that something's been changed. It's saying that it's looking at the first version of the model. If I click to update it, it refreshes, redraws the views to correct scale and updates the dimensions for me. And that's one of the powers of working with a parametric design tool. You make changes to this 3D model and the 2D drawing will update. Okay, so for the final thing, the important thing to remember is use constraints as much as possible. If I asked you to create a square washer with a circular hole, you would sketch a rectangle. You would add some relationships. Select two lines, come over to the right, make them equal. Then we could put in a circle. I'll hit S on the keyboard, find the circle command, drag, and now we need to get this centered or located. There's a number of ways to do this. My favorite is to draw construction lines. So I could come from the midpoint to the midpoint. Now this is kind of messed up. I'll select this line and make it construction. This one's construction, but it doesn't look good. So I'll select the line, make it vertical. Select this line. It's already horizontal, looks good. I'm going to snap the center point to that corner. I could drag it and it would snap into place and it looks like it's going to keep that relationship. Looks good. So how many dimensions do I now need to do? The, all the sides are equal. This is centered. We'll make this 2 and this is 1.5. So now whenever I make a change to a dimension make this six, I would expect to be a square plate with still a round hole. Maybe the hole's not scaled properly, but it's still keeping the square washer shape. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful. See you soon.